Uh, Madam Chair, I have some guests uh, that are still on the other channel. I'm going to try and get them to this meeting channel. Uh, okay. Okay. You ready, TJ? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We'll call this Douglas County Board of Commissioners Transportation Committee meeting uh, to order. Today is Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. It is 2 p.m. I'm Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, the Vice Chairman of the Transportation Committee, um, Vice Chairman uh, and uh, District 2 Commissioner Kelly Robinson is the Chairman of the Transportation Committee, and he couldn't be here today due to, uh, to some extenuating circumstance, but however, I will be running the meeting today. Um, first of all, I, I would like to just go around the, I'll call it the virtual um, table to see who's uh, attending the meeting. Again, I'm Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, the Bear, uh, Vice Chairman of the Transportation Committee here in Douglas County. and. Uh, Mark Teal, if you could go next and then we move from there. Yeah, Mark Teal, County Administrator. Jessica Theriel, Assistant to Mark Teal. Okay, thank you. Gary Watson, Connect Douglas Transit Director. Thank you, Director Watson. Alvin Darden, Legislative Aid to Commissioner Robinson. Okay, thank you, Alvin. I'm and Miguel I Valentin, Transportation Director. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you so much. All right, uh, Transportation Committee, uh, you have before you, I know you've had an opportunity to review our uh, minutes from March 17, 2020. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussions about the minutes? We have a motion and a second. Um, please indicate by saying your name, yes or no. When I ask, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please. Ramona Jackson Jones, yes, I approve. Mark Teal, I approve. Gary Bill Watson, Valentin, I approve. Gary Watson, I approve. Okay, thank you. Uh, the, and the motion carries. We have a unanimous vote to approve the minutes, and the motion carries. All right, we'll start with our agenda today. We have some uh, transit services update. And that would be based on the fixed route ridership update and uh, Director Watson, I know that's. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so thank you. As as you can imagine, our, we've been hit pretty hard by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. I'll give you a, a few numbers uh, to point that out. In January, we were averaging 127 boardings per day. In February, 121 boardings per day. In March, it went down to 82. And then for the first 14 operating days in April, we were averaging 46 boardings per day. So we're down about 65% with our fixed route ridership. Um, our flex trips and paratransit trips are also down. Since April 1st, we've had only 13 flex trips in 221 paratransit trips. Uh, we, we, during this pandemic, we've sort of leveled out at around 50 uh, boardings per day. And what that's telling me is that these are, are our hardcore riders, that they're absolutely depending on us to get them where they need to, to go. And that's one of the reasons that you never want to consider totally shutting down your transit service because there are people who absolutely depend on you to get them uh, to their needed places. Okay, and I believe that's saying uh, all the transit systems across the state of Georgia, they're uh, sending the same message as you. We don't want to shut our systems down. But I believe... Uh, uh, Director Watson, it, can you talk about some potential funding that may come down to subsidize our loss in terms yes. of ridership? Yes, ma'am. I sure sure can. Uh, uh, Congress and the president passed the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Bill, which is called CARES. And just recently, uh, through the ATL, uh, Connect Douglas was notified of its allocation through this CARES program. 
and and they've set aside uh, a little over two point five million dollars for Connect Douglas. And this this is money that we can use to offset uh, coronavirus uh, costs, lost revenue, um, any any additional uh, costs that we might have associated um, with this. This this is one hundred percent federal money. No local match uh, is required of it. And what we'll uh, have to do, what we're in the process of doing now, is is determining. Um, what, what our costs are going to be, um, what, what we can put in the grant application, and then we will have to file an application with the FTA uh, to get this money. Um, but uh, this particular grant program is a priority with the FTA, and, and they'll be working hard to get these uh, applications approved. <clears throat> and Madam Chair, related to this CARES, uh, grant program. <clears throat> One thing I would ask of the committee today uh, is to give us the go ahead to bring this before the full board of commissioners at the first meeting in May to, to authorize us to file this application with the FTA for this CARES money. Okay. And so it, if I heard you correctly, you said $2.5 million is earmarked for Douglas County, right, Director? Yes, ma'am. The, the exact amount is $2,523,816. Okay. That, that, that's encouraging news. And also, this will cover the loss on our um, band system as well? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. That's great. because All of that lost revenue we can recover. Okay, well, that that's encouraging and good music to our ears. Uh, particularly Madam Chair, on this is, yes, Mark Go Teal. Ahead. I'm sorry. No, you. I'm finished, Mark Teal. Just on the current emergency situation, Gary, I don't think you have to wait to apply for this money. Um, I would go ahead and apply for it, and then we can just let the board know that we've applied. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's that's fine and for board. me. The board will have to authorize acceptance if we receive the award, but um, as far as just applying for it, I think you can go ahead. Okay, great. That's one less step. Good. Mm -hmm. Just move forward. Madam, we, Madam yes. Chair, do you agree? I, I agree, certainly because we are under emergency um, situation. Yeah, at this time. Yeah, we declared an emergency, so we need to, to move forward because we hate to miss out on the opportunity because we, our next meeting, certainly we can't get it in there tonight. So our next meeting is two weeks from now. So yes, we need to take advantage. Okay. And then okay. The, the approval will come back to the Board of Commissioners. Yes. Yes, okay. ma'am. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Anything else you have for us, Director Watson, before I move on? Yes, ma'am. Uh, <clears throat> We've we've been awarded the uh, second year of our CMAC grant funding uh, for operation right. of the bus bus service too. So we're at the point now to where that that grant has been awarded, and the board does need to accept that that grant. So I would like for that to be on the the, the agenda for the first meeting in May. Okay. And so that and that's one point six million dollars in federal money with the four hundred thousand dollar local match. Okay, great. Uh, would you like to make a motion so we can uh, bring it before the board? Yes, ma'am. I, I I move that that we bring before the full board of commissioners at their first meeting in May the uh, congestion mitigation air quality grant in the amount of one point six million dollars federal money with a four hundred thousand dollar local match for operation of the connect douglas fixed route bus service yeah mark teal second okay we have a motion and a second any discussion we have a motion and a second all in favor please indicate by saying aye gary watson aye mark ramona, teal, aye. ramona jackson jones aye miguel valentine aye Okay, we have a 4-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Very good. Thank you. Gary, you have all good news for us today. I'm hoping that you, <laughs> this is the trend. <laughs> okay, yeah. for the, you have, you have anything else for us? Yes, <clears throat> yes, ma'am. I have uh, two small change orders related to the, the um, addition to the transportation center that, that I need for the, the committee to consider moving on to the, um, Board of Commissioners. 
these these two change orders are related to uh, the inspection of the facility uh, made by the Douglas County Fire Marshal. Uh, Fire Marshal pointed out some some minor things that needed to be added uh, to the to the building. Uh, there's two change orders. Both of them together total three thousand four hundred and seventy four dollars and thirty eight cents. We have the money in our budget to cover this. We're not asking for any additional money. And also yeah. this is 80% reimbursable uh, from the federal grant that we have. Okay. And that, like that, that would be my motion to uh, bring these two change orders before the, the board at their first meeting in May. Okay. You made a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. We have a second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please indicate by saying aye and give me your name and, and nay if you there. Aye, Ramona Jackson Jones, support. Yes. Aye, uh, Gary Watson. Mark Teal, aye. Miguel Valentin, aye. Okay, we have a 4 0 unanimous vote to carry this information before the board so we could get these change orders taken care of for the expansion, the completion of the expansion for our transportation uh, center. Is it going? I, I was over there recently, um, uh, Director Watson, and it's looking real good. It, how far out are we from opening? Well, it's the, the facility itself is finished, the construction is done. What we're waiting on now is the uh, delivery of the furniture right. and the the COVID-19 pandemic has, has delayed that some to uh, when I talked to, to our furniture distributor a couple of days ago, he couldn't give me an exact date as to when the furniture would be delivered. But, right. but the building itself is beautiful. We would love for, for all of y'all to come down and take a look at it. Okay, I've just wrote and looked on the outside and said, okay, I'm waiting to get inside. So I will definitely come real soon and, and, and share that with the rest of the board of commissioners so we can come by. Great. Okay. Um, thank you. And next, we're going to go on to the next item. Anything else? I have one more item to bring before the, the committee. Um, the... Our contract with Transitions Commute Solutions uh, to operate the, the bus service for our second year, it's, it's been, been uh, vetted and approved by all the, the local uh, parties. The Connect Douglas staff has, has reviewed it and, and approved it. Uh, Risk and Safety has reviewed and approved it. And just this morning, I, I got word that our legal staff has approved it. As well, so this this contract is ready to move forward for approval by the the board of commissioners. Uh, the budget for this particular contract is one million seven hundred forty eight thousand one hundred fifty three dollars and forty two cents. And again, this this is an eighty percent uh, reimbursement uh, from the federal government. Uh, so we would be we be receiving one million three hundred ninety-eight thousand five hundred twenty-two dollars uh, from the feds. The Douglas County share would be three hundred forty-nine thousand six hundred thirty-one dollars. And and again, this this money is in the budget for two thousand and twenty. So this is not asking for any additional funds. But but my motion today would be to. Uh, take this contract before the Board of Commissioners at their first meeting in May uh, for approval. Okay. Okay. Um, you have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. We Mark Teal. Okay, Mark Teal. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye, Ramona Jackson Jones. Aye, Mark Teal. Miguel aye, Gary Rogers. Watson. Mm -hmm. And I heard you too, Miguel. Did I hear you? <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you, uh, Director uh, Valentin. All right. We uh, we have a 5-4-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you. We'll move on to the next item. Okay, Madam Chair, the next item uh, on the Thank agenda is a review of the results of the uh, request for qualifications uh, that was uh, advertised 
last year, I believe now. And uh, this is the second round. And uh, if we have, hopefully we have Brian Poole uh, from GMC on the line. Brian, are you there? I am. I'm, I'm here okay. with you. Uh, good. Uh, I can see you now. Very good. Uh, Brian is going to present uh, the results of the phase two and the composite phase one and phase two um, analysis of the responses to uh, the RFQ. Uh, Brian, uh, his team had done a presentation for the phase one results uh, earlier this year, or I guess maybe it was late last year. And uh, now that we have the results of phase two and the composite, uh, Brian is gonna run uh, through that and uh, we uh, will have some discussion after uh, the end of the presentation because the goal, as you're aware, is to have uh, some additional consultants on standby uh, contracts uh, for design projects as, they, uh, as the need arises. Uh, so with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Brian Poole. Well, thank you, Miguel, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, a little unique situation here. I apologize. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, a little unique situation. Last time in February when we presented phase one, I wasn't in attendance, and my, my team members were, were there, Harold Lennon Call and Rhonda Davis. Uh, today, they're attending, but they, they unfortunately couldn't get on, and they're, they're uh, able to speak uh, audio but not visually, so they are here with us. It's just you won't be able to to see them. Uh, so we appreciate this opportunity to come to you to do phase two. If you give me a second, I'm going to do a, the PowerPoint where you can uh, uh, see it. Is is everybody seeing the PowerPoint right now? Not yet. Not yet? Okay. Yeah, not yet. Okay. Let me, uh, let me get on where I can click the share of it. Hold on. Right here. Okay. There we go. Everybody can see it now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can you still see it or did it go away? It went away. We can see you okay. now. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where did I see? All right. Back up and try that one now. Let's see. How's that? Yeah, we, we can see it now, and we're back to you. Okay, can, can everybody see it? Yes, okay. Uh, all right. We so can I'm, see you now. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Can everybody see this? Do I need to go back? Uh, can everyone see that now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay. If everybody can see that, thank you for your patience in this. What I'll, what I'll do is I got a presentation for the for the summary here. I'll just go ahead and get started. Just want to kind of go back with you and just revisit how we got to where we are today. Uh, Douglas County submitted for the qualifications last year. You had 25 vendors that submitted um, for the 11 services that you had outlined in the RFQ, as you see right there. Uh, you see my cursor up and forth. These are the 11 services. Uh, that, that vendors were allowed to submit on, whether it's multiple or they only wanted to do one service. It was, it was all kinds of ways of how a vendor could do it. From that, uh, the results presented to you in February uh, is, is as shown. So the 25 vendors from our evaluations, Goodwin Mills and Kwood and Harold Lindenkoll LLC, our team members, uh, we made the recommend, recommendation that these were the uh, the consultants that met the qualifications for phase one in the individual services. Uh, from that, that enabled them and you to decide 
uh, to move forward, which you did, and you moved forward and instructing us to proceed with phase two. And in the phase two, uh, there were 17 vendors out of the 25 that, that um, was, when it was able to move forward. So in the phase two, uh, I'll go through these just real quickly, highlight some items that, you know, like we did in phase one, we continued the evaluation, keeping in mind that phase one scoring results represented 50%, phase two represents 50%. And then in the end, you add the two together to get a cumulative score, uh, the best ranking. So uh, myself, Rhonda and Harold, we each independently reviewed each of the 17 uh, based on the submittals that they, that they gave. Since the phase one evaluation conducted, uh, two firms were acquired by other firms. GCA was acquired by KCI and Moreland Altabelli was acquired by Atlas. Uh, Douglas County accepted to move ahead to be evaluated uh, in those services uh, as they were in phase one. It's just now they are identified by their new company names, KCI and Atlas. As I mentioned before, there are 17 vendors that are being considered for this phase two evaluation for the 11, uh, for the 11 services that they're, they uh, were allowed to submit for. And then I will conclude with the phase one and phase two ranking summary. So just a reminder of the selection method for phase two. Uh, there was two categories, technical approach and past performance. The technical approach had a score of 40% and the uh, past performance had a, uh, a ranking evaluation equivalent to 10%. I, I want to point out that in the phase two, the vendors were instructed by Douglas County, uh, here are the services that you're allowed to submit for that, that you met under phase one. And in that, uh, you're allowed to submit for phase two for the services and uh, further clarification was given that you only submitted three pages to cover technical approach and past performance cumulatively. So in, within three pages, they had to provide their technical approach for the service and their past performance for that service as well. Uh, so we evaluated based, based on, on that. I, I will I will note that there were two vendors that chose to um, submit a three page um, uh, proposal um, for all of their services. Douglas County specifically specified in an amendment that you had to submit a three page per individual service you were authorized to do. Two of those vendors chose not to do that for whatever reason. However, the evaluation team took it at face value to say that for the services that you were authorized to proceed forward with, uh, then what you're telling us is this three page report represents each one of your services. So we reviewed it for each one of those services, you know, uh, that way uh, for two of the vendors that, that chose to do it that way. All other vendors perform as instructed by Douglas County provided the three page sum, uh, submittal for each service that they were interested in. I'll stop right there. Questions, comments? Okay. okay. Moving ahead. So again, just a reminder that we evaluated these firms. These are in alphabetical orders. All you're seeing right here, uh, the, the firms that submitted, and then you, you will note there were some vendors that chose that even though they were allowed by Douglas County to submit for a service, for whatever reason, they chose not to. From that, again, our committee provided the evaluations of each one of those and uh, came up with a score. And, and in that score, moving forward, um, cumulatively, in the end, by ranking, this is how, uh, when you add up phase one and phase two, again, phase one representing 50% and phase two representing 50%, Cumulatively, when you add them up, here are the results um, of the ones um, that received. And the ranking is just ranking based, uh, based on highest to, to, to lowest. Number one being the highest, number five being the lowest. 
And that concludes our, our evaluation uh, submission to, to Douglas County as we were uh, tasked to do. Uh, we appreciate that opportunity to do it. I'll again stop right here to answer any questions that you may have. Are there any questions from the committee? Um, I just had one question uh, regarding the rankings. Um, and this is for you, Miguel. I see yes. just for example, if you look at Minor Road Improvement Design Services, the five names that are listed, and I know number one is the highest and number five is the lowest. Would we pull from those five or just number one is the one that we would utilize at all times. Can you explain that to me? Yes, certainly. Uh, Madam Chair, the uh, the listings are actually just in alphabetical order, They're not in any ranking. Uh, so okay. they're listed alphabetically and uh, the county in, in previous discussions, the desire was to have somewhere between three and five consultants uh, under contract for, for each of these um, yes. uh, areas. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, they're not in, in uh, particular order. They're strictly in alphabetical order. Uh, when, when we have uh, uh, discussion regarding how many are we going to proceed forward with, do we um, go with the top three or do we go with um, uh, the top five or four, whatever whatever the uh, result uh, end result is, then uh, we can have discussion about uh, do we include companies that essentially um, were pretty far down in terms of their ranking uh, because they they did not either didn't submit for phase two or just overall they, their submittal was weak. So we can have a discussion about that, but as what you're looking at now, the composite phase one and phase two summary results are not in ranked order. They're just listed alphabetically. Okay. Thank you for responding. Okay. Um, any other questions for uh, Bryant? Hearing none, I think we're, uh, we're ready to uh, have internal discussions. I say internal uh, county discussions regarding how to proceed. Madam Chair, uh, the goal, as I've indicated, was to uh, from from this uh, the results of this process to then enter into standby contracts with multiple vendors, multiple consultants, uh, and I'll open it up for discussion as to whether uh, we would do that with the top three, or do we want to narrow it down even further, or uh, what is what is the consensus of the committee? Hmm. Well, uh, I, I, I noticed that we have five to six per category, and I'm just not sure that the more you have, that probably give you a little more uh, autonomy or availability if we need it. You know, in case the first three were not available, you could move down to the next, like tap, you know, to number four or five in terms of utilization. So let me ask you, what do you need? And first of all, also, I would like to thank you, Brian, for taking the time to work on this project for us. So I know you it's a huge body of work and you've done a great job. So thank you so much. Thank Brian. you, we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So um, Director Valentin, I'm just wondering what, you know, your experience in the past, do you like? Uh, in, my, in my past working in that purchasing uh, department component, Many years in the back in the healthcare arena, it's always nice to have, uh, a, you know, secondary, pr primary, secondary, and sometimes you can have a third and fourth vendor just in case someone is not available. So, what are your thoughts? But my, my thinking, Madam Chair, is that that uh, if we 
we ought to we probably ought to go with the top three. Um, mm -hmm. Beyond that, my recommendation would be if there if there should be a tie, which I don't believe is the case between a a number three and a number four, then I would I would suggest we go with um, with the top four. But but I think having three in each of the categories. Uh, based on a number of projects that we are uh, anticipating, I think that would be sufficient. That that would be my judgment. Okay. So how do we choose? You said they're in alphabetical order. Do we just choose just uh, the one, two, three, or are you just saying that ones uh, out of the five you would like to go with certain ones? You certainly would have an idea of what their uh, work performance is like being that you're right at the helm of transportation. Certainly, and we also, uh, Madam Chair, behind uh, these summary results are actual um, scores. Right, and correct. What I, would, what I would recommend then is that we go with the top three scoring uh, companies in each category. Uh, okay. So it may, it may be, uh, for example, for minor road, it could be that uh, Number one, number two, and number five are the top three. Oh, okay. Uh, Understood. Understood. Okay. Mark, Teal, you have an opinion? You have anything? Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. I agree with Miguel. With the top three? Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay. Well, uh, you want to make a motion, Miguel? Yes, I, I make a motion that, uh, that we um, recommend to the full board to approve uh, standby contracts for the top three ranking firms in each of these categories. Second. Okay. Mark Teal. Okay, Mark. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion or any questions? We have a motion and a second. Please indicate by saying aye. Miguel Valentin, aye. Mark Teal, aye. Gary Watson, I. Ramona Jackson Jones, I. Okay, so we're going with the top three, and then you'll have that information available for us, Miguel, in terms of you know when you go behind the bill and determine the scores. Yes, Madam Chair, I'll provide okay. that information. All right, thank you. All right, so um, anything else on this particular topic? And I, I think I that covers it. Uh, thank you very much, Brian. Appreciate your help. Okay, again, thank we promise. You. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Goodbye. All right, Brian, if you would, could you please email that presentation to uh, uh, either Miguel, well, you got Miguel's e email address, if, but uh, Jessica needs it if you have her email address. If not, just send I it have to it. Miguel. Miguel has, it. He has everything. Okay. All right. Well, thank glad you. to furnish anything else that you need. Glad to help. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. The next item on the agenda is the John West and Brightstar Road intersection improvement project. We uh, advertised for bids and uh, received the bids on on that. Uh, let me try and uh, share the screen and so you can see the uh, the summary of the bids. Okay. Okay. No, that didn't work. Uh, let's try this again. Okay, can you see it now? Yes. Okay, so uh, the uh, there were, I believe, ten uh, bids on the project, and they ranged uh, from under four hundred thousand to over nine hundred and twenty-five thousand. Uh, the the low bidder is Exelier Construction LLC at uh, three hundred eighty-one thousand one fifty-seven. And thirty cents. 
and uh, we've contacted uh, the references and we've, we have experience with some of their construction prior. We believe uh, that, uh, that they are capable of doing the work and uh, so that would be our, our recommendation going forward that, uh, that uh, we make a recommendation to the full board to award a construction contract to Exelier Construction uh, for $381,157.30. Okay. Do we have a second? Are you making a motion? That is a motion, yes, ma'am. Yes. Do we have a second? Gary Watson, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please indicate by saying aye. Miguel Valentino. Okay. Gary Watson, aye. Mark Teal, aye. Okay. So we have a four unanimous vote, and the motion carries. Thank you so much, Miguel, for that. We look forward to, uh, to this item coming before the Board of Commissioners. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. The next item on the uh, agenda is a couple of signal permit applications. Uh, we have the ongoing construction that, uh, that GDOT is, is now managing at State Route 92 on Mount Vernon Road uh, for the installation of the traffic signal there, mm -hmm. uh, but it requires uh, an application from the county be filed with, with, uh, with GDOT. And so um, it um, it will be an action item for the board. Uh, similarly, at State Route 92 and Riverside Parkway, we have been in discussions with GDOT about um, potentially doing a quick response project there as well. Okay. Uh, they have indicated that they will consider that and uh, ask that we submit the application for the signal uh, because whether we're successful in having GDOT do the work uh, or we continue with our design uh, process that we've um, entered into already, uh, then uh, before the signal is finalized, we have to have a permit uh, to operate it. So um, it's just um, applications that uh, we need to file, uh, but they essentially commit the county to uh, pay for the power uh, to uh, to run the uh, the traffic signals uh, indefinitely. Okay, certainly those uh, traffic signals have been a long time coming. They've been on the horizon for quite a while. So I know this would be a celebration, a time of celebration uh, from our citizens because that one in Mount Vernon in '92, that uh, that intersection is very difficult to make a left turn, and also the one at uh, State Route 92 and Riverside Parkway. So thank you for working on this so diligently. Are you, would you like to make a motion so it could come before the Board of Commissioners? Yes, I would. Uh, I make a motion that uh, we uh, recommend to the full board uh, to approve the submittal of signal permits for the State Route 92 and, and Mount Vernon uh, traffic signal and State Route 92 and Riverside Parkway traffic signal. Second. Okay, okay, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please indicate by saying aye. Ramona Jackson Jones, aye. Gary Watson, aye. Miguel Valentin, aye. <laughs> Mark Hill, aye. Thank you. It's been a long time coming. Please. Yes. Thank you. I'm so excited. And I know the citizens of Douglas County will be elated to, to hear that, um, that this light, these lights are being installed. All right. We'll move on to uh, tab number five. Uh, Miguel, I believe that's you as well. Uh, Director yeah, yeah. The, uh, uh, the Georgia Department of Transportation is, has opened up applications for what what is typically referred as off system safety, uh, mm -hmm. non state routes, uh, safety improvements uh, for striping, and so we would uh, we would like to submit an application. I will share my screen again 
And uh, uh, so you can take a look at the list of, uh, of um, locations that, um, that we're looking um, to have striped. So that is, that is the list of roads okay. that uh, we would be submitting to GDOT. This type of project in all likelihood will be done by GDOT. Um, so we have to provide them the list and they will contract directly uh, with a vendor and, and perform the work. We have done that recently, in fact, and uh, that project is underway now. This is another opportunity uh, for additional roads to be striped under that program. It, it is a 100% uh, federally funded uh, or state funded, whichever way they, uh, they roll it out. This is for fiscal year 2023. And the value of this work um, based on the bids that we have received uh, more recently is probably in the neighborhood of $300,000. So if we're successful in having this work done, uh, it would be 100% covered by either federal or state funds. Okay, that's very good Good to hear. All right. Um, you want to bring this before the board to be approved as well? Uh, I do. Uh, so, uh, Madam Chair, I, I make a motion that, uh, that the committee recommend to the full board to approve a submittal application for off system safety striping uh, for fiscal year 2023 based on this attached uh, road list. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please indicate by saying aye. Ramona Jackson Jones, aye. Mark Gary Hill, aye. aye. Gary Watson, aye. Okay. We, um, we have a 4-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. So thank you. The Board of Commissioners, we look forward to this coming before the board. Thank you so much. And uh, next tab number six is street lights. Can you bring us up to speed on the street lights? Is that you? Uh, can, County That's Administrator. actually Mark Teal. Okay. County Administrator. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. Can everyone see this? Y yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So at the top of the screen, um, can you see my mouse as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So phase one, that was the street lights on I-20 that have already been approved uh, by the board. Uh, phase two are road segments. So that includes uh, uh, Lee Road from I-20 to 92. Well, that's on hold. And Lee Road from I-20 to South Sweetwater is on hold because of construction. Um, so Highway 166. So we have lights at Tyree, Post Road, Caps Ferry, Big A, West Chapel Hill Road, and Highway 5. Chapel Hill is actually included in the second part of this. So Highway 166 from the new roundabout, because the new roundabout already has street lights so they would connect from there go along 166 to chapel hill road which is what uh, commissioner robinson had requested um uh, and then down the list commissioner robinson also requested uh after the fact uh, warren road which is uh from polk road to brook hollow drive that's over close to uh, brookmont subdivision and then all the intersections listed as well. So the other commissioners, when I say that, Commissioner Guider, Commissioner Carthen, and Commissioner Mitchell, these are some of the streets that they uh, provided you, Mark. Yes, they provide. They all provided the the segments that are listed in Phase Two. Okay. And intersections. Great. So yes, multiple for multiple intersections and multiple um, road segments for each one. So the total cost for phase two is $16,067.56 for Georgia Power, 
Um, and then the monthly cost uh, to the county would be, which can't be paid with splice money, $1,720.33 um, for Greystone total cost, and it's more because they have more intersections, as you can see, highlighted yellow, oh. and more street segments. It depends on whose uh, territory it's in. So phase two for Greystone would be $250,000, at a monthly cost of $3,709.25. In our street light fund that we receive, um, so there is an there's an overage that these numbers here, the 3709 and the 1720, will not affect the budget. Okay. So everything is so budget. total installation cost. If you add I 20 plus the intersections plus the street segments, we had allocated five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars for um, in the splice. So currently, total price is at $362,723.29. Okay. All right. We're excited that these lights are coming. I know we've already, you just mentioned that the ones off I-20, the lights that we're uh, looking at install, installing off the ramps are underway. And these other lights, Mark, is there a timeline? Do you think it'll be soon, sooner than later? On a lot of them, once we get everything, uh, so the ones that are on state routes will have to have permits, just like the ones on I twenty. But there are a lot of these intersections and a lot of these road segments, especially the intersections. They can take out thirty a weekend and knock them out. Um, so they should go pretty quick, according to representatives from the power companies that I talked to. Okay, thank you. Sounds great. All right. Uh, do you need to make a motion to bring anything before the board on these, Mark? Um, yes, ma'am. I would okay. I'd make a motion that we bring uh, the phase two street lights uh, to the board of commissioners for approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a sec and a second. Please indicate by saying aye. Ramona Jackson Jones, aye. Mark Teal, aye. Miguel Valentin, aye. Gary Watson, aye. Okay, we have a 4-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you all, um, transportation uh, committee members. All right, we have one more item and this other. Any Anybody have anything? Mark, do you have anything for this committee? No, ma'am. Anything to add? Okay, um, Director Valentin, you have anything to add? Uh, not at this time. Okay, Director Watson? No, ma'am. Okay. Well, and I don't have anything to add except good job. Thank you all so much for moving our transportation system along uh, here in Douglas County. Uh, the roads are looking good and the transportation, uh, our mode of transportation, I realize that it's down at this time, Director Watson, due to COVID-19, but it's just so uh, encouraging to hear that the federal government will be subsidizing our loss. So thank you so much. And uh, if there's nothing else to come before this transportation committee, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Have a great Thanks, day. Everybody. All right. Bye-bye.